Hi, my name is Eric Bond and this is the Texas Bible Project and today is May the 20th, 2011 and for those of you afraid about the earth is going to end, there's going to be a rapture, I thought I'd wear my flash t-shirt. Nothing will happen on the 21st, nothing, no rapture, it's not going to happen. So I hope everybody has a great night, chills out. What we're going to talk about today is called the deadly wound. You like you like Revelation stuff? Here we go. Uh, Revelation 16 verse 10. And the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seat of the beast, and his kingdom his, and his kingdom was full of darkness, spiritual darkness. And they gnawed their tongues for pain and blasphemed the gods of heaven because of pain, and repented not of their deeds. This is the deadly wound that is uh, brought about by God on the uh, one world system, the one world government, one of the heads of the beast. Let's look at it. The, the answer to all of this is found in Daniel. What it was talking about is pours the vial out, which uh, vials are the plagues. A plague is poured out on the seat where Satan will take up his residence as Antichrist. That is only one place, one place only, and that is the Holy of Holies in Jerusalem. Jerusalem has a temple mount. It's an escarpment. It goes up from the valleys all the way around it, and right on the top of it is a rock. Currently, there is a golden domed mosque on top of that rock. The, the problem, the wars of all the centuries have had to do with who gets to run that rock. The rock is the key to everything. Jerusalem, the world, absolutely everything. Now, although there may have been some Israelis in charge of the rock, in charge of the temple, there may have been a temple on top of there. It's who had dominion at the time. Let's go to Daniel chapter 2 verse 31. Thou, O king, talking about Nebuchadnezzar, sawest and behold a great image. This great image, whose brightness was excellent, stood before thee, and the form thereof was terrible. This image's head was of fine gold, his breast and arms of silver, his belly and thighs of brass, his legs of iron, and his feet of part iron and part clay. Now here we go. This is everything. Later on, uh, Daniel tells Nebuchadnezzar that the head of gold is you, Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar came in 600-ish BC, destroyed the temple, took dominion over all that land, including the rock on top of the escarpment on the temple mount. The rock is what we're talking about. That's where the throne, that's where Satan intends to put his throne on top of that rock. Now, so Nebuchadnezzar had it in one fell swoop. Uh, it was taken away from his grandson by the uh, uh, Persians. The Persians came in overnight, took the place. Overnight, the Medes took it away from the Persians. So we've got the head of Nebuchadnezzar's gold. We've got the silver arms, right and left, Medes and Persians, silver. Uh, they had the next dominion that was taken away from them. They were defeated by Alexander the Great from Macedon, uh, Macedonian. He was Greek. They took it away from him. They, they uh, destroyed the Persian Empire. Alexander died very early, and uh, his empire was split into several pieces. The East and West Seleucid Empire was what it was called. In 80-ish BC, a gentleman by the name of Pompey, came in and destroyed the Western Seleucid Empire. And then in 60-odd BC, they came into Jerusalem. And they took Jerusalem away from the balance of the Greek or Seleucid Empire. So we have a clear order of succession through all these guys. The Romans now have it. The Romans, let's, let's go, they are the legs of iron, as you recall. The Greeks were the uh, belly and thighs of brass, mm -hmm. East and West Seleucid Empire, two empires. Then the Romans came in, uh, the Italian Romans, they took over, 
put in a puppet government. There was a temple there during the time of Jesus. There was a puppet government. The high priest was uh, appointed by the Roman government. He was uh, perhaps not even uh, Israeli at all or Judean at all. Uh, so in about 300, so they have the, 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 the Western Roman Empire has the place. During the time of Jesus, in 300 odd A.D., a gentleman shows up by the name of uh, uh, Constantine. He takes over the Roman Empire and he runs it from the Bosporus, and they're called Byzantines. So you've got right and left legs of iron. You've got the Roman Italians. You've got the Roman Byzantines. In 637 odd A.D., the uh, Islamics at 160 636 BC they showed up laid siege to Jerusalem took it over in 637 the Byzantines let them have it they walked right in and right into the top of that mountain 50 years later they built the golden domed mosque uh, that was what they always wanted on top of the escarpment there are no Jewish settlements there's no synagogues there are Catholics Roman and there are Islamic things up there there's a Catholic Church up there there's two uh, Islamic mosques so we go down to the feet part iron that's the Romans Jerusalem's full of Roman churches Catholic churches and then you have the Islamics on the other side that's the feet and toes made of part iron we know that that's Rome and part of dirt that's the uh, Arabians and there are ten toes the rock comes in that's made without hands and hits the rock hits the feet and destroys the feet and the going on up the iron and the brass and the silver and the gold that is relegated into history this is Jesus uh, pouring out having that vial poured out on the top of that rock where the throne is going to be now Let's look at the ten toes. There's ten toes, right? So you got their part, uh, their part uh, iron and part dirt, part clay. Ten toes. If you look at the gaps between it, there are one, two, three, four, five. Here's a gap. Six, seven, eight, nine. So what that is signifying is that ownership of the rock has been has gone back and forth nine times. Guess how many crusades there were? There were nine. So what is going to happen is that Jesus is going to create a conflagration that is going to destroy what is sitting on top of his rock. That uh, mosque will be likely destroyed in a supernatural fashion and uh, then Antichrist good old Satan he's gonna come in in the guise of Antichrist he's going to heal the deadly wound the deadly wound is a problem with the one world government he will make things all better because as we see in Daniel Antichrist comes in the little horn comes in peacefully and prosperously there's not gonna be blood in the streets he's gonna be very peaceful He's going to say, I'm Jesus Christ, you can worship me. And he's going to have all of his minions working for him. Look for the uh, next Texas Bible Project update. It's going to have something to do about the guys, the dirt, toes, and feet. My name's Eric Bond. You make it a great day, and thanks.